Hi, uh, welcome to K-State. My name is Dr. Durbin, and I'm one of the emergency clinicians here at K-State. I'm also an alum. I graduated here in 2016, and I'm very happy to be back. Uh, so we work on a two-week rotation here. Um, so students spend two weeks on the rotation doing or helping us with triage, taking histories, um, doing wound repairs, doing blood transfusions, plasma transfusions, um, all sorts of ICU treatments, um, taking care of um, drains, all sorts of fun things. <laughs> so um, we keep everyone really busy. The students are here from 4 p.m. until midnight for the first shift, and then the second shift is 10.30 until 7 a.m. And at that point, all of the patients we take in get transferred to internal medicine or surgery, so we do work very closely with those departments. Um, the residents and the clinicians in those departments do help us after hours as well if we have any questions with our cases. Um, we do serve a pretty large area. We have patients come as far as Nebraska or Kansas City um, and even you know close to Colorado in some cases because we don't have a lot of emergency support in this area. So um, we do have people traveling from a far distance with their critical patients so we have to be ready all the time. Um, students are always intimidated when they start this rotation because emergency is scary but they always leave the rotation feeling like they're much more ready to handle emergencies in practice and they feel like they learned a lot. I think the most telling is that most students feel like they're actually much closer to being a real doctor when they finish this rotation and I think that's what makes us happy being in this position, um, helping everyone feel that much closer to being a real DVM. And I have some of my students here that would like to share their experience. Hi, my name is Dean Barrasso. I'm a fourth year vet student at Kansas State University. I am from Atlanta, Georgia. In my time here, my five days here so far, my emergency rotation has been uh, pretty fun. I've got to see a variety of cases that I wouldn't have seen in other places and got to work them up. Everything from a dog with a potential seizure that we actually suspected to be uh, marijuana toxicity to um, an opto case where a dog had uh, spondylosis in his spine. And that was the predominant reason why he was daggering and uh, that's probably the reason why he had weak hind legs. And I've also gotten to um, work up ferrets and rats and got to see the type of uh, medications and treatments to be given. And there are a few rotations where you have that type of variety. So I've learned just so much during my five days here. And um, I really like the idea of just thinking on the fly and stuff like that and really prepares us in the future how to be better doctors. My first three years at Kent State uh, University at the vet school here has helped me a lot, prepared me in several different ways. Everything from their exotics program here has helped me how to deal with things like ferrets, rats, and different types of birds to um, just the general setup and how they've taught everything in such a, a like systemic type of way, whether it's like bacteriology, well, with bacteriology and parasitology focus, and just how all the systems kind of align throughout our times when they've taught us here. So usually, if um, we were doing more, um, or if we're doing more, with the, if we're taught more in orthopedics, you know, just when it comes to like how to administer the type of medications for different type of orthopedic procedures and stuff like that, how to manage them post-op the different type of complications you have to worry about that. All the classes were pretty well aligned to teach us that. Uh, so I really just like that. Kansas State, like a lot of the classes were pretty much in sync when it comes to like different aspects that they're teaching us, whether it was like pulmonary risk, pulmonary contusions that we'd have to manage, um, how to recognize that, or just simple things like how to managing like different toxicities and things of that nature. Hello everyone. My name is Andrew Ariola, and I'm a fourth year clinical student here at Kansas State University. I'm from Los Angeles, California, Los Angeles area, uh, and I actually didn't attend my preclinicals here. I actually went to Ross, which is an uh, island in the Caribbean, and they have a vet school there. Um, and then we actually get transferred out and do our clinical year at uh, a bunch of different schools in the States. Um, so emergency has been really fun for the last five days that we've been here. Uh, we're currently 4 p.m. to midnight, and our next shift is 10.30 p.m. to 7 a.m. Uh, the hours fly by. Usually we're always busy. If we're not, we're reviewing, freshening up on notes, um, just in case for what we might have come in. Um, a case that we just had yesterday that I was able to take was a dog who swallowed a fish hook, came in, uh, and it actually had its hand in the cookie jar, more or less, and it had a fishing line hanging out of its mouth. Um, we were able to sedate, and as we sedated, the dog threw it up for us. So that was really good. It was like a three-pronged fishing hook. I've never seen that before being from Los Angeles. I guess here it's pretty common. We get a lot of foreign bodies here. And then the last week we've had maybe six cases that have uh, just had animals eat stuff that they're not supposed to eat, whether that's fish hooks or socks, underwear, you name it. Uh, so emergency has been really fun. I think one of my favorite parts about emergency is the uh, 
we're like a coalition, right? So we have other departments, we have radiology, so x-rays, we have oncology, cardiology, and whenever we need something after hours, we can rely on them because they always have somebody on call, uh, and they come in and help us, especially with taking x-rays, uh, as we call radiographs. Um, they're really important for diagnoses because if we can't see something on our ultrasound machine or uh, on anything else, they come in within 15 minutes and they set up the x-ray machine really quickly and we're able to get our diagnosis. Uh, for the most part, we send it out, comes back to us within 30 minutes to an hour. We're able to update the owner on what's going on. Uh, so emergency's been really fun and I'm looking forward to the rest of it. Hi, my name is Bailey. I'm a fourth year vet student here at K-State um, and I did my previous three years of clinical education um, in all that here at K-State as well. Um, I am from Wichita, Kansas, so from Kansas originally, and I went to K-State for undergrad. So K-State really feels like home, um, and vet school was nothing short of that. Uh, I am currently on the emergency rotation here in our small animal ICU. Um, this is a two-week rotation where we get to spend nights, evenings, um, kind of learning all the ins and outs of emergency medicine and how an ICU functions. Um, and I think this is kind of a rotation where I've gotten to see how all of my clinical um, training previously throughout all three years of um, vet school have kind of accumulated to this. Um, clinical skills is a course that we have uh, during our first three years of vet school and that kind of allows us to start slowly building those skills that we really use a lot on this rotation. We learned how to do physical exams, take histories from owners, place catheters, do blood draws, all that kind of stuff, which is really what we're doing in here um, every night that we come in. We never know what we're going to get and so it's really nice to have that three years of preparation uh, to kind of learn how to use that on this rotation. And we also get to learn a lot during clinical skills about how to work within a veterinary team and I think that's one of the most uh, beneficial parts that I've gotten out of this rotation. Um, I'm kind of learning how to function as a doctor while also still asking for help from those around me. Uh, we have some really great student workers, some great veterinary nurses, and obviously great clinicians and interns to learn from. And so I kind of get to learn what my role is within that as a vet, um, as a future vet, and as a vet student. Um, so lots of team building and all of that. Within the ICU, we have a lot of really cool technology that we're getting to um, learn how to use as future doctors and what we can do to learn more about our patient's uh, well-being, especially on emergency. It's important because owners can only tell us so much with their histories, and so we really have to use our technology to uh, kind of figure out what's going on with the pet when they come in. So within the ICU, we have um, fluid warmers um, that we can put blood products in, uh, plasma transfusions for if patients come in with a lot of trauma or internal bleeding, um, we can get that ready to go. We have um, catheters stocked all, the, all around, needles, syringes, all of that type of stuff that we can need to get fluids into patients really fast. Um, we also have these two units um, that can pull down um, and allow for quick administration of oxygen in the case of an emergency. Uh, and then um, behind me we have the ultrasound machine uh, which they can use to do fast scans which allows us to quickly assess for any free abdominal fluid uh, within the abdominal cavity. Um, we often do that with cases of congestive heart failure, trauma patients, all of that. Um, and so kind of a lot of different fun new things that we're getting to learn how to use in a low pressure environment where we have a lot of support from clinicians to take time and show us how that works. We also have uh, two really nice oxygen cages over there. Um, those allow patients to be on oxygen support um, round the clock. And so if a patient comes in with difficulty breathing and they uh, are stressed by having a mask held over their face or for whatever reason they require oxygen for 24 hours um, because of their respiratory distress, we can easily put them in one of those cages. They have clear glass doors. Uh, and that allows us to continuously monitor their status. Um, we can even fit in the cage if we need to, to do a physical exam um, without stressing the patient and having to remove them from oxygen. So it kind of just adds another extra layer of care and learning how to use that type of technology.